your friends. Come worship at the rivers. To learn and grow. Hi, we would like to welcome you to the rivers. Where your life will never be the same. I'm Pastor Don Givens. And I'm Pastor Susan Givens. And, and we, we would like to welcome you to come, come worship at the rivers. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you again for joining us at Rivers of Life Christian Center. I'm believing God that everything is coming together for you. I'm believing God that you're gaining victory in all things. And I, I because I know that Lord Jesus Christ has already given us the victory, but it's a matter of us realizing that we don't have to go searching for victory. It's been given to us, gifted to us by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, there's a lot of things going on, you know, with a lot of saints, but I'm here to encourage you to, 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 to obey the word. And by obeying the word, you're obeying the spirit of the living God. By obeying the word, you're obeying the spirit of the living God. And if you obey the word, you will have great manifestations of the giftings of the spirit manifesting in your life. Great manifestations of the power of God, of the greatness of God, of the goodness of God. Just by keeping the command of the Lord. You know... In um, the book of Amos, the Bible says this, hate evil, love God. Hate evil, love God. And I'm just so encouraged because I believe you hate evil and love God. And when you love God, great things manifest in your life. The goodness of God, the mercy of God, the compassion of God, the favor of God is all upon you right now. So it's time to rejoice. It's time to realize your victory is secure in Christ Jesus. Amen. Um, if you would, we're going we're gonna to get right into the teaching tonight. So if you would. Go to um, 1 Timothy 6. We're going to read 1 Timothy 6 and 12. Amen? So go to 1 Timothy 6. We're going to read 1 Timothy 6 and 12. Because we, we fight to destroy the enemy. You know, our fight against the enemy... It, it, it's not to um, make, make, make it less comfortable for our enemy. Because our enemies are the enemies of the cross. And Jesus Christ has already dethroned them. So we fight the, 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 the enemies of the Lord. So with that being said, I pray you at 1 Timothy 6 and 12. I'm reading the New American Standard Bible, 1995 version. Of verse 12 says, fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life, hallelujah, to which you were called. And you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Amen. Now, we, we left off uh, last time. We were talking about this word, this first word, fight. This first word, fight. And um, we, we, we've been emphasizing that this is talking about the arena 
in which the fight takes place. This is talking about the place of the contest. This is talking about uh, being ready to go forth, being assembled in the name of Jesus Christ before all the heavenly host. Because this, this arena, this arena is filled with all of those who come to the games. And they come to watch the athletes do battle. Well, in our case, this arena is filled with the heavenly host. Our heavenly father is watching on. The Lord Jesus Christ is involved because he goes out before us. The Holy Spirit is the power of God within us. So they prepare us to go forth and wipe our enemy out. That the Lord might be glorified. So. We left off last week, so we had to tell you that because sometimes, you know, things get away from people. And you never know who the new audience is. And so, and, and so this, this first word, fight, is talking about the place of the contest. And we know the place of the contest is in the spirit realm. In the spirit realm. A realm in which... Uh, uh, has been all has already been judged because anything that don't submit to the Lord Jesus Christ has already been judged. And the victory has already been given to us. We told you in Second Corinthians uh, ten four through six and Ephesians six ten through seventeen reveals to us just a, a small sample of our enemies and how they function. So go read uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 6, and Ephesians 6, 10 through 17, just to give you an inkling of who our enemy is, because our enemy is not flesh and blood. Our enemies are not people, so we're not out to, to, to destroy or make people ruined. We're out to tear down every stronghold. We're out to tear down all, all the ungodliness that comes against the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, we, we're here to 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 uh, use the, the 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 weapons of our warfare. Yeah. So every stronghold and. Everything that's raised up against the word of God, every imagination, every speculation, and every lie, every fortress, every, every bondage, everything that is trying to keep you from uh, realizing the abundant life that you have in Christ Jesus, because you do have abundant life in Christ Jesus, and you have it now, and all things do work together for your good. We want to tear down, uh, uh, we, are, we are tearing down every stronghold and fortress, every imagination, speculation, every lie, every word raised up against the, the word of God. And we are destroying them. Because, see, see, the Bible tells us one can put a thousand to flight. Two can put ten thousand to flight. It's time to get your enemy running from you. All of them. Um, last, last time we were together, we were talking about this, this word fight is, is, is the command of a continuous action. So you, you don't uh, pray today and not pray tomorrow. It's a continuous action. It's a continuous, a continuous stand in, in, in the greatness and the power of God. You have the victory. You don't listen to your mind or, or some suggestion to tell you, 
I'm too tired to pray. You're never too tired to pray. The Bible makes it plain. Man should always pray and not lose heart. You always want to communicate with God. You always want to read the Word of God. You, you should be reading the Word of God constantly, continually. You should read the Word of God. This should not be a day go by when you don't open your Bible and read it. Not one! The, the, you, and, and let me tell you something. If you watch TV every day, you should read your Bible every day. Because your Bible is far more important than whatever you see on the TV screen. And if you read and pray, and keep God's commandments, the greater one will, will manifest in your life continuously, constantly. You will never go a day without the manifestation of the life of God, of the power of God. So this is how we fight. We fight, we, we, we fight uh, with holiness, righteousness, Purity. Our, our, our attitudes are right and just before God. Our fight is pleasing our Heavenly Father. I'm telling you what I know. You please God, your enemies will take flight. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. That's truth to make free. So, we, this, this fight is the commanding of a continuous action. You know, and, and, this, and this continuous action is referring, is referring to the necessity, necessity of the nature of the Christian to go forth at all times realizing the warfare is won. But there is a warfare because there is a struggle. But it's not a warfare that, that has the outcome that is not preordained. See, God has ordained you to be victorious at all times, in all things. Our God has called us to victory. He's told us we are triumphant in Christ Jesus. We always triumph in Christ Jesus. This must be a knowledge of God that you embrace. I'm always triumphant in Christ Jesus. Jesus always gives me the victory. And I'm triumphant in all things in Christ Jesus. And don't let somebody tell you that you're not. Don't let some su suggestion in your mind tell you that you're not triumphant? Sure you are. You see, your enemy cannot overthrow you. So what he does, what it does, is make suggestions to try and get you to see yourself as not, as not having the victory. And if you get an agreement with your enemy that you do not have the victory, well then you forfeit the victory. Whatever you're going through, the Lord Jesus Christ has called you to overcome. 
the Lord Jesus Christ has ordained you to overcome. So I'm not telling you there is no battle. There is a battle. But praise God. Hallelujah. If you obey God, your victory is assured. So don't don't stop fighting, you know, because of what you see. We walk by faith and not by sight. That's what we do. We are we are the the, the saints of the most high God. We always triumph in Christ Jesus. Always. So I encourage you, saints. I encourage you big time. Give God thanks. Go forth in victory. Do not alter or change your confession of faith. And know that my faith works immediately. You need to know that about yourself. Yourself, man. You don't walk by sight. Oh no, 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 no. You don't walk by the appearance of things. Let me tell you something. The things that are of this world system are temporal and subject to change. You live the eternal life of the, of the living God. And guess what? That cannot be broken. So, so this fight that we're in, you know, is talking about a continuous uh, Battle. It's talking about the, the, the nature of the Christian in this warfare. And your warfare is against evil, not people. Your warfare is against evil, not people. Just like our brother Amos understood. Hate evil, love God. Hate evil, love God. And this warfare is a warfare about is a warfare uh, uh, against evil. And evil will always will always lose, give place to good, to God, to God. For He is good. And when you are good, evil will lose. When you are of God. Evil will lose. Ungodliness do not stand a chance against the name and authority of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So don't be moved by, by uh, the things you're going through. You put a wholehearted effort, a wholehearted effort uh, to live pleasing to God. You put a whole hearted effort to live pleasing to God. To live pleasing to God. But your whole heart. See, at this point, you know, you're ready to engage in the contest. You're ready. You're ready to go out here, you know, and be victorious. You're ready to go out here and exalt the Lord. You're ready to do the same works Jesus did. You're ready. You are absolutely ready. So don't be, don't be, you know, pulled off by, by, by sense realm stuff. Don't be pulled off by the way something smell, the way something look, the way something taste, the way something feel. You're not pulled off by that kind of stuff. You're not pulled off. You, 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 uh, uh, you're not those who see your enemy as bigger than you. You're not. Pulled off by by the by the, the way something feels, that don't feel right. You tell it to feel right.
Let me tell you something, saints. You have the victory. And you have it right now. Right now. You do not, you do not just roll over. You come before God with the, you know, seeking his grace to help in your time of need. Um, so, so, you know, and I'm going to tell you something, saints of the Most High God. I'm going to tell you something, Christian. You cannot opt out of this fight. You cannot say you do not want to participate because God has ordained you to win. God has ordained you to participate. God has even picked an enemy that you can overcome. So you're not fighting an enemy that God has not chosen for you to overcome, that he might be glorified. Our Heavenly Father should be glorified. Jesus Christ should be glorified. So, so know whatever you're facing, wherever you may be, the victory belongs to you. You cannot stop and, and, and give up. You must go forward in the glory of God. God's grace will bring you through. So get your eyes off of the, 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 the people. Put your eyes on Christ Jesus. Put your focus on Christ Jesus. I don't care what you have to deal with. Put your focus on Christ Jesus. I'm telling you, your enemies will back up. They, they, they might not. It might not seem that way to you, but every time you go before the Lord, you stop your enemy in his tracks. Look, I'm going to have to stop right there. Amen. Um, I'm believing God will be able to continue with this if that's his will. Glory to God. Amen. But I want to speak to those of you who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I don't know what your deal is. But you know Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior and he is the only Lord and Savior. You know this. So I'm going to encourage you to have enough courage to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. If you would, pray a prayer like this with me. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Lord Jesus, I will follow you all the days of my life. Amen. And then there's those of you who say you're saved, but you don't, you don't respect Jesus Christ. You don't reverence him. You don't honor him because you live a life of sin. And Jesus Christ is not waiting for you to get it together. Jesus Christ commands you to obey him. And so if that's you, and uh, you're, you, you, you've pretty much gone apostate because if you don't know, if you don't obey Jesus willfully, you're apostate. 
um, I want you to pray a prayer like this with me, but you need to pray it from your heart, and you need to mean it. Lord Jesus Christ, I turn from my sin. I ask you to forgive my sin. Lord Jesus Christ, I confess my sin to you. Confess them to the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you for your word tells me you are righteous and just to forgive me my sin if I confess my sin. And Lord Jesus, I will follow you all the days of my life. For sin is behind me. And Lord Jesus, I am in you. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, let me tell you something. Those of you who, 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 diso who are woefully disobedient to God, the Bible takes, makes this very plain. Go and sin no more, lest something worse come upon you. So you walk away from that sin and all sin for good. Um, with that being said, we are Rivers of Life Christian Center. We meet at 3940. Airline Boulevard, Suite 1042321. Amen. Our service times are Sunday, 10 a.m., Wednesdays, 6.30 p.m. Once again, our service times are Sunday, 10 a.m., Wednesdays, 6.30 p.m. Visit us on the web at www.riversoflifecc.com. www.riversoflifecc.com. Our heart's desire is to build a relationship with you, a personal, lasting relationship with you. From all of us at Rivers of Life Christian Center, we encourage all of you to come worship at the rivers. Thank you for watching tonight's words of encouragement. Come worship at the rivers.